especially for those of you who really want to be a millionaire and you're not just talking. If you're just talking, then there's a club for that. They look great. They wear all the t-shirts that say that they're a boss and they're doing nothing. Uh, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person behind you. Because I really don't know what I would do if I didn't have some work that I had to get to. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Work Hard Holics. Oh, I feel like it's been a while since I've sung the song. So why not sing it now? I don't know why I'm so happy. Okay, I, I have an idea. I'll tell you about it later. For those of you who are wondering what does it mean, it's the movies and the shakers always doing something. If you want to be in balance and get some more green, work hard holics. And who am I? I am Shirley Crawford, the executive director of the Women's Business Center, RVA, located at 1510 Will Lawn Drive, directly across the street from the Kroger at Will Lawn. Also been a consultant for over 25 years. Yes, the grades are real. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. And I am the original work hard holic. And to my digital left, <laughs> I love this. It's like virtual reality. I have none other than Socialita Cristina. She's almost there. Okay, now tell them who you are, Cristina. Tell them who you are. Educate the people. Yes, my name is Cristina, also known as Socialita Cristina. I am a social media expert. Um, so I specialize in assisting small businesses with brand awareness and social media management in the RVA area and as well as Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Yeah, I like how she says Santo Domingo. You know, she speaks Spanish, right? She habla de Española. No, <laughs> there's no A on the end. Sorry, that was just <clears throat> a moment of amusement for me, but I'm back now. Okay, so here's the deal. Every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, of course, you can always catch it in the replay, we come together to give you the tools, the resources, the support to help you live better, do better, and be better. And yeah. the bottom line of all of it is that we want you to business better. Yeah. Right. So we're all busy people, right? We're mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, caretakers, entrepreneurs, employees, leaders, movers, shakers. You could be a Quaker. It just rhymed. Um, but in, in all of that, how do we balance all the balls? So all of this started <clears throat> a few years ago. Whoop, whoop, check out that. We're old now. Um, because people always ask me, they're like, Shirley, I see that you... I thought you were out of the country. I thought you were here. I thought you were there. But wait a minute. I saw that you were hosting this program. Wait a minute. I read about you in the paper. I heard that you're doing this program. I heard that you have this going on. What are you doing at the center? And so people will always ask me, like, how are you able to do so many things and still seem like, you know, relatively fresh? Right. And so I said, hey, this is something I can share with the world. Because part of the deal as a work hardaholic is that, hey, I love to work. I love what I do. It, it pleases it. Like I get, I get pleasure and joy from helping other people succeed in business. So yeah, I work on Saturdays. Yeah, a lot of times I'll come in on Sunday afternoons for like Entrepreneur Academy or some other class or to prep for the week. I love all of that. But I also love to get stamps in my passport. COVID, please go away so that I can get back to that. Love the beach. Love to travel. Love a good festival. Christina and I, we had an outing this weekend. We did. We had an outing. Um, so her birthday just passed. And we're like, okay, let's go do something. And we went to the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. And so, which used to be the south of the, it's a whole long story. It used to be the south of the James. Um, and it will be the south of the James again when it's back in the south of the James. So right now it's at Bird Park um, on Saturdays. I don't know the hours, um, but it's called RVA Big Market. RVA Big Market or RVA Market? Do you remember? Big Market. Big, big Market. Big Market. Not small. Big. And um, 
We had a lot of, it was a really, I had a great time. Like I told yeah. Christy, I had a, I had a great time. Like I love festivals and events and activities of that nature. And the ability to be able to get quality products. I didn't get anything food wise. I know Christina got something, but they had like fruits and vegetables, but I had already done my shopping for the week. So I'm coming back so I can, you know, shop for that. But the idea of getting great quality that I can see who produced it, who made it, and know that I'm supporting local and I'm supporting small business owners. It's like Mm -hmm. win, win, win all all over the place. Right. And so we had several conversations with um, vendors who were out there because farmers market people, just like the entrepreneurs I deal with on a day to day basis, they are great at making um, their product, their their shea butter. I think Christina got some of that. Or I got something that I thought was amazing. I got a bunch of stuff on Saturday. But one thing I got in particular, um, I invited her on the show because I think that's why I'm hype right now. I've been taking my shots, Christina. I think that's why I'm like, hey, what are we going to do now? What's happening next? So one of the vendors that I had a long conversation with is called Papa Ickies. I think I have the name right. And so she does these ginger shots. Shot, shot. Okay, wrong song. Sorry. Be with us. Be with us. So, um. These ginger shots, and so they uh, like mine has. I got the unsweetened kind, so it's real <clears throat> tart because I'm doing paleo, right? People, I have health goals, quantifiable goals. I have health goals, so um, I got the kind without sugar. The kind with sugar, I know tastes better than the kind that I got, but I feel like I'm like, woo! But it's like ginger and cayenne and something else. And I've been meaning to introduce ginger into my diet more. But truth be told, when I take ginger straight, like if I just like take ginger and eat it or put it in something, my body doesn't like it. And so thus far, I have not had any negative reactions to this ginger, but I do feel like I'm like, woo, good yeah. morning, America. I told you, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Christina got some too. So that's why we're like, we've been comparing notes. And I'm going to let y'all know what else happens. But I've invited her. And so we'll set up a time and have her come on the show and tell you all about it. Because that means we get to cover a lot of what it means to be a work hardaholic. We can talk about your health. We can talk about um, supporting small businesses and, you know, get you all moving. So, and so uh, even for those of you who might be interested in learning more about what it means to, you know, be at a farmer's market, like what's that industry like? So we'll get her on here soon enough. That's what will happen. I promise we'll get her on here. But uh, yeah, that was a great experience. I had a great time. So in that vein, kind of, sort of, almost, not quite, maybe, almost, um, Whenever we come together for our Work Hardaholics, where we learn, once again, how to work hard, play harder, business better, and to really live in balance, right? So with that in mind, um, one of the first things we always do is we talk about our word for the week. Do, do, do. And so our word for this week is neoteric. I like it when I like it when Christina's sitting next to me because I can really look at her face to see <laughs> to see what she thinks about our word. But um, she's not in here with me today, so I'm looking at her kind of, but it's not quite the same. She she can school her features, but yeah, there she is. But Nia Tarek. Mm. Right? I know you're going like what? Okay, so if you think about neonatal. Or as I stuck that picture in the corner over there, Neo from the Matrix, because they're having Matrix 4 coming out. I've heard interesting things. We'll see how that goes. Um, But it's really about new. I mean, that's really the essence of it, about operating in in, in what's new, right? And so um, as we're talking about a neoteric, um, a lot of times when we're dealing with business, Right. The the way that you make money is that we don't reinvent the wheel because the wheel is an amazing thing. Uh, but we we customize it. We update it. We add more, you know, 
I'm thinking about paper towels. I'm like, more ply to it. No, we uh, we put on rims and we make the rubber thicker and we we rent, we winterize it and we we use the tire as exercise equipment. You're right. Have you ever run tires, Christina? <laughs> Christina's like, where are you going? I'm going to the wheel. I'm getting brand new over here. I'm getting neoteric. And so, um, as a as a small business owner, even as an employee working in a workplace, you don't have to always come out with the brand new. You don't have to be the neoteric policy one. But what you can come up with is an addition, a subtraction, make it easier, discover the pain point and find a solution for it. So like we talk about tires, well, for those people who are living in certain areas, do y'all know, I'm geeking out for a moment, bear with me. In different areas, different states, different coasts, they use different types of pavement to coat your street. So, uh, and one of the things in Virginia, people were having a bunch of tire problems a few years ago because they had changed the mix that they used to pave the streets for economical reasons. And that's why we were having like more accidents. And that's why your, your tread and grip on the road wasn't quite the same. They weren't trying to advertise that, but that's what was happening. So if you live in an area where like Alaska, I was surprised when we went to Alaska, we went to Junction City, Alaska in the Delta, the Delta Junction, whatever, we went to Alaska. It's really pretty. What they use for pavement is, is I, I was surprised the roads didn't freeze over more. Oh. They drive all the time, all throughout the year, no thought about it. They use different things to coat their roads for the weather. So a lot of times when we're talking about being neoteric, it doesn't necessarily mean Let's scrap everything and start from scratch. It means what can you do to add on? All right. So that's what the whole neoteric. Use that in the sentence. Neoteric. And so for those of you who are going, I'm not going to remember that. Really, think about Neo. Most of us have seen The Matrix, one of them. Don't know if I'm going to see number four. Can't say. Um, I really can't say, but for those of you who think Neo, once again, Neonatal, Neo, well, Neotology would be the same thing, Neo from the movie, just think that's new. Okay. It's that new, new is what you get with Neoteric. Do, do, do. All right. On that note, (laughs) wow, I feel like time, I feel like time is moving already and we haven't even gotten anywhere. So let's keep the party moving. Um, so now we want to get ready to hear a word from our sponsors. But before we do so, here's the thing that I want to share. For any of you who are looking to promote your business, looking to be able to share more about what you do with the population who actually cares about what you do, um, I highly recommend becoming a sponsor of Work Holics. The show is going places. And so we'll take you with us if you're fit. Money doesn't mean everything. So there are certain people who would attempt to be a sponsor, but they might not be a fit. And so they cannot be. But that's not you. So feel free to reach out. Send a message to admin, A-D-M-I-N, at workhardholics, W-O-R-K-H-A-R-D-A-H-O-L-I-C-S dot com. I remember the days when it took me longer to spell that. Those days are gone. It's second nature now. We can spell just fine. All right. But now a word from our sponsors who make this show possible. Ladies, are you looking to move your office from your kitchen table to a space of your own? Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Are you looking for co-working and community? Well, then come join us at the Women's Business Center, RVA, located at 1510 Willow Lawn Drive, Suite 100, directly across the street from the Kroger at Willow Lawn. Visit us on the web at wbcrva.com or on social media at wbcrva. When you're ready for more than just office space, come join the WBCRVA family. All righty then, once again, thank you to our sponsors. And right now in the vein of sponsors, really in the vein of what we're all about, We're really here to support small business owners, you other leaders in the community who are working hard, 
but who might not know how to play hard, we're here for you. That's what we're all about. So right now, we want to give a shout out to you entrepreneurs, especially those who support the show. So every week we like to have a quick little feature and say, hello, entrepreneurs. Hello, small business owners. So it's now time for our Socialita Business Check-In. Yes. <laughs> you like my intro? I love it. <laughs> I gotcha. so yeah, at this moment in the show, we like to shout out a couple um, entrepreneurs, specifically in the RVA area, because we always want to support local first. Right? That's right. Um, so I just wanted to just run down a couple of businesses to share with you guys. Um, and a few that I found that to be very useful myself. So okay. first, um, I want to shout out 418. Okay. They are what? on four one eight. Okay. I'm so used to eight oh four. I was like, what's four one eight? I'm sorry, please continue. So um this individual, um, she makes these amazing keychains and I put them uh, on Instagram about it. Um, this is really, really great for individuals that no longer want to use business cards. Right. If you're all into the whole contact listing, I don't want no one touching me or anything like that. You can put your website on here. You can put your link tree on here. You can put whatever on here. And all you have to do is tell someone, hey, take out your phone, scan it. It's great. It's great for networking. Um, I have I do some notary things on the side and to avoid touching people. I'm always like, take out your phone and you can cash at me. Um, so it, it's great. Don't touch me. (laughs) So don't look at my nails right now, but you can also have it personalized where I have Socialita right there. If you guys can see that. All right. Um, So they're amazing. Um, The next shop that I want to shout out is Quality. Okay. Um, And that's T. E-E, I was thinking that. I was like, this must yeah. be a t-shirt, people. Okay. So, you know, I found this business at the farmer's market, the RBA big market, and it, I'm not going to lie. So I have PCOS, which causes my skin to be extremely dry, um, and like perfumes and different things like that really don't stick to, it, it just like, it really just doesn't stick to my body. I don't know if it's because my body, like my skin be so dry. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yeah. it so... Um, I purchased some body butter from her. And when I say, like, when I say... My Is this body, the one that you were smelling? Like the yes. the sugar and the baby powder? Yes. Listen, when I say I feel like a whole buttery stick. <laughs> <laughs> Not a stick of butter. Okay. <laughs> Literally had just grabbed my arm to, like, move me or something. They were like, your skin's really smooth. I was like... I know, right? <laughs> Thank you. So, I want to shout her out because a little goes a long way. It's affordable, and most importantly, they're local. I just want to okay. point something out because um, Christina was trying. This was the whole thing about going to the farmers market. She wanted to get the is it shea butter or cocoa butter. Shea butter, right? It's shea butter, yeah. Yes, I'm a shea butter fan, and so. She was trying. I am. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I love supporting entrepreneurs. I love supporting local. But if you haven't gathered, I am like one of the frugalest people in the whole wide world. Mm. I spent. I spend money on travel, and I will spend money on food. But anything else, I'm like, eh. I've told you about our conversations that hit the center where Ty wants to spend a dollar. I'm like, eh. Do we have to? So Christina was telling me about the shea butter lady, mm-hmm. and so I was like, yeah, whatever. And uh, I smelled her. I mean, I smelled her hand, not to get gross, but you know. And I was like, okay, that smells pleasant. And I tripped about it because while we were walking around doing stuff, I got other somebody's like, oh my God, you smell so good. Yeah. And she looked at me like, told you. I was like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, three different things. So, you know, but it, it's just great that it just stuck to me. So I, I really, really appreciate it. I really love that. Um, I will forever be a customer as long as I can. Um, okay. So the next business, they were at the farmer's market as well, which is um, Minor RBA Bakes. They have paleo options. They have, oh. yeah, 
they, I mean, it's this um, butter. I'm all into butter. But butter I, almond? No, no, no. It's a butter gooey something. I thought I had a photo, but I, I didn't. Um, oh, no. Actually, I do have a photo. It's called gooey butter bars. And oh, my gosh. It's like. It's, it kind of tastes like cheesecake or whatever, but it literally melts in your mouth. Um, I would be in trouble if I bought a whole thing of that. But it was <laughs> <laughs> the next day. Um, so I want to shout them out because they actually create, um, I'm sorry, they bake on site certain things, um, which was pretty nice. This is the place that had the beignets? Yes. Okay, yes, now it. this is all I have to say that's not, <clears throat> I was very offended and hurt. Because I love beignets. For those of you who've ever been to uh, New Orleans and you didn't have a beignet, you didn't go to New Orleans. I don't know what you did, but that's not where you went. And so I love a beignet, especially with some powdered sugar. And mm. they were whipping them up. And they looked so good. Yes. They, were, yes. they did not have a paleo option. And for those of you who don't know, paleo is what I'm doing right now. Mm-hmm. I started I started paleo last week. I've lost five pounds. Whoop, whoop. Yep, that was last week. So I was real hurt about that. But she says they're working on a paleo recipe. <laughs> I had the almond butter cake, mm-hmm. which was paleo. And so my thing is, a lot of times when people talk about, like, I don't think it has to be nasty for it to be healthy. I just right. Right. talk about neoteric options for cooking. That's really what you're dealing with when you're talking about people who have vegan. Like they talked about the Met Gala. They had, it was um all plant-based, mm-hmm. which I'm like, eh, that don't sound good. Some people were very excited, but somebody was talking about that their food wasn't great. But just because you're trying to do better doesn't mean that it should be horrible. So I thought it was really great for them because for those of you who have done paleo, I've done keto, I've done paleo, and returned back to paleo. And a lot of times when you buy the stuff in the store, it's nasty. Like, it's just like, I just spent all this money. And it was healthy, but I'm not going to eat it. Uh, the reason I'm losing weight is because I'm not eating the food that they're providing. So their paleo options were, like, really moist. Like, the cakes and, the you know, the stuff that they were providing, it didn't taste like sand and grit and, like... You know, you know how when your parents slid pills into your food, it didn't have that nasty vibe. It was very, it was very well made. It was. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. Um, and I think it's a husband and wife team, which I absolutely love. Um, so shout out to them. Um, and what's their, what's their name again? I, I want to reach out to them. I forgot their name. Too. RBA cakes or something like that. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go back. I, t- I took a picture. I do have a picture somewhere. I'm gonna. I have to make sure I reach out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, we'll see him Saturday. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Saturday, I might be here in the office. We'll, we'll see. see. All for the farmers market. Don't be. Listen, I'm looking for a basket. If anybody got <laughs> one of those. <laughs> One of those picnic baskets that they like, you know, back in the day, they're picking fruit off the tree. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's the it's the it's the Dominican and her people. I'm trying to tell you. So she's not just talking about a basket. She really wants, and I've already told her, she really wants one of the baskets you get when you go to like Guatemala. Jamaica mm-hmm. or the Bahamas, like a hand woven, yes. funky, maybe slightly European vibe to yeah. it basket that's what she's yes. talking about bread basket like you have the bread sticking out the side of it like that's oh, that i told you i described it that's what she wants yeah and so i did i've already suggested 1000 villages to her on carrie street mm-hmm. but um if you all know some other options mm-hmm. please oh, yeah. please feel free to share with christina where she can go pick up this basket that she talked about all day long. yes yes because i like i said i'm, I'm really gonna get into starting to do grocery shopping on a weekly basis because I want more fresh food. Right? Yeah. Um, and when you buy them for the month, you're not going to eat that stuff. No, you're not. It, it's either going to go bad or you won't get fresh. Right. So most people who are buying monthly, you have to stock up and stuff that, you know, like the stuff that you add water to. <laughs> It's not quite rationed, but you have to have stuff that has a shelf life. And so like Christina knows for me, like I spent a summer, I spent a summer in France and I picked up the habit. I shop weekly. Mm -hmm. And which is why like 
the clerks in 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 my in my grocery store know me like mm-hmm. they know me and see me and it's been and that's been very helpful mind you for other things but like i tend to go in each week there's some things that i'll buy that'll be for the month but for the most part like i'll buy some of my frozen vegetables for the month stick mm-hmm. them in the freezer and then i'm buying what's going with that so the meat is fresh the fruit is fresh and that way i don't have to worry about gnats and fruit flies and all that kind of ridiculousness because it's all fresh what? exciting okay y'all know that song so okay. um, <laughs> so the next business i'm gonna shout out is my business socially what? <laughs> yes um if you don't know you're about to know okay We're yes ma'am media, social media management agency again servicing rba and santo domingo dominican republic um so we have again we bring brand awareness to your business we bring growth and engagement and all those amazing things but most importantly we bring sales right because you can have a thousand five hundred thousand followers and no sales and no conversion right right so um so that's what we do um and we have a sale coming up i can't tell you what it is until you subscribe to my newsletter oh me out (laughs) www www.socialita.rba.com. So, um, I think that is, I think that's it. All right. That was, that was quite the hit. We've got healthy, we've got smelling good, and then we got a teaser for, um, to improve your social media. So there you go, people. Have fun with that. If you have a business that you'd like for us to shout out or highlight, feel free to drop us a line, send us a message, DM us, say hello. We support local. We support small. We support you. There you go. All right. So the next thing that we want to talk about is one of my favorite things because I'm a geek. I, I think I should write a song that says that. There's somebody. I, I know the song, you're a jerk. I need a, I'm a geek. I'm a geek. I am. <laughs> And I'm proud of it, right? And so at this point, we have our book it moment. Book of Dano. I haven't said that in a while. Okay, so um, the book we're highlighting this week is called The Servant. It's by James Hunter. And so here is the deal. Um, for those of you who don't know, and if you don't know, it's because you have not been following me. Um, I am part of the LMR class of 2020. What's up, people? Hello, classmates. And so, which is Leadership Metro Richmond. And one of the major themes of LMR is servant leadership, right? A lot of times people want to be the the person that people see. They want to be the person in the front. They want to be that person. But really that plugger, that person within your organization, and we all know who it is. We all know in our organizations who it is that's really leading. Like, who are you really following? Like I think about, uh, there was a time that I worked for an organization. And so honestly, I think everyone hated the owner. Um, I don't have any other way of putting it. Like they hated to see the owner come, loved to see the owner go. And that was the bottom line. And so I was the person they came to when they wanted to know what was happening, when they didn't want to know their responsibilities. Like I was their liaison because they just didn't want to deal with the owner. I led, even though my role, my role was actually slight leadership, but I had, I led even beyond that because they knew that I was there to assist them, to serve them, their advocate. I was there with them. I was a part of their team. I was truly a servant leader for that organization and very empathetic to their needs and causes and wants and really wanted them to be better, right? So what I loved about The Servant by Mr. Hunter, I'm going to share a couple of excerpts. And so then um, you'll know why I loved it. And I don't always love every book that I share. I should clarify that. I share the book because I feel like it's beneficial to you all to know about, to expand. Um, every millionaire interviewed always says one of the things to know, if you're looking to increase or to be a millionaire just like them, then you need to be reading a book. They highly recommend autobiographies biographies in general, so that you can learn more from others and the things that they have done and their experiences. So for our book at moment from The Servant by James Hunter, want to share a uh, couple of excerpts. 
Okay, so page one hundred and one. <laughs> depending on your your edition of this. Okay. The principal had the dictionary wide open on her lap, ready to go. Simeon, I looked up the first word, patience, and it talks about showing self-control in the face of adversity. She wrote out the definition of patience as showing self-control. God grant me patience and grant it now, the teacher said with a smile. Is patience showing self-control an important character quality for a leader? The coach spoke first. There are a bunch of different people in the classroom. And the leader must model good behavior for the players, kids, employees, or whomever they are leading. If the leader is screaming or otherwise out of control, you sure can't expect the team to be under control or behave responsibly either. It's also important, the nurse added, another classmate, that you create an environment that is safe for people to make mistakes without worrying about some crazy person going off half cock. This part is what I loved. If you spank a baby who is learning to walk every time she falls, she won't think much about walking, will she? She'll probably decide that it's safer to just crawl around, keep her head low, and not take risks, just like a lot of browbeaten employees I know. I loved that. I often have this conversation about different types of leadership, especially with those people that I'm consulting. And so a lot of people think the way to lead is to yell, to scream, to make people cower. They lead from a place of fear. And um, I would say that I, I look at my personal example. I have been, I am an excellent manager. I'm not even trying to pretend. I'm great at managing my staff, employees, et cetera. And it's not because I'm so likable. I'm okay. Um, it's not because I'm so lovable. I'm okay. It's because I lead from a place of following. So I'm really big on making clear expectations. I'm really, I'm really, really great and really big on like really understanding where you are, helping you understand where I want you to be, helping you get there. But then I'm very demanding. Like once I get you to where I know that you know what you need to do and what you need to have happen, I'm ext- I expect that to happen. And when you don't, I will, without emotion, tell you what you're doing wrong, show you how you can do it better. And I'll even let you know how many strikes are against you before I will fire you. Like you are never surprised when it comes to me, right? And so there is no yelling. Like right now I feel like I'm yelling because I have very sensitive hearing. And so right now I'm like, am I yelling? Like, I want to talk. This is why generally speaking, I talk at this level. This is my normal tone, but that's not really loud enough (laughs) for, you know, podcasting. So we increase the volume, but I, 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 I'm real, like gentle spoken. I might say sharp things, but the tone is real, real level. And so that's something else they talk about. Like when you are leading, it doesn't always have to be, bah, 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 rah, rah, rah. you are horrible. Go get it together. So another excerpt from the book. So once again, it's uh the servant, James Hunter, And so just sharing a couple excerpts of books from my library that I think are very beneficial for leaders, for entrepreneurs, for those of you who are trying to make an impact, trying to give you some tools. All right. So another one is, uh, as I mentioned, it's the sample is given of a gentleman who goes into a classroom of people who are trying to learn to be better leaders. Right. And so they they talk about the sampling of the different types of people who are in the room, their responses to the lessons, et cetera. OK, so in this case, um, the, the instructor is trying to tell them that they don't have to basically yell at everybody to, in order to get them to respect them or to be able to get things accomplished. Right. And so there is a drill sergeant in the class, an army drill sergeant. So, of course, he's just like, how do I lead if I'm not yelling? You're, I have to be I have to get respect. And so he gives them the example. OK, well, if um, someone who ranked over you came in, you'd be deferential to them. You you'd you'd speak to them. You'd be more empathetic. You would care more. And so then. So they say, OK, so you're capable of all those emotions. And they're like, yeah, I can do it, but it's hard. OK, so. This other excerpt, the teacher, who's a part of the classroom, um, she says, do you suppose we could treat everyone we lead like a very important person? 
Imagine treating Chucky on the forklift like he was the president of the company, or our students like they were school board members, or nurses like they were doctors, or grunts like they were the general. Could you, Greg, treat each member of your platoon like a very important general? And he says, yeah, I suppose, but it'd be pretty difficult. This lesson here. So, like, I think I've asked this question before. Um, Like, how many of you all know your male person's name? How many of you all know the name? Like, Like I said, I go to the same grocery store all the time. How many of you all know the name of the clerk at the grocery store? God forbid, how many know your neighbor's name? Like, I won't even ask that. But ha- these people that you're coming in contact with every day, especially those who are servicing you, like we've learned during the pandemic, the importance of those pluggers, of your mail people, of your store clerks, your restaurant people, your first responders. Like we've learned their value, but most of us only learned it because it was it was a, there was a deficit. I would suggest, like the book suggests, that if you treat people at all levels like they have a value, which they do, like they have importance, which they do, then they will be better employees. They'll be better neighbors. They'll be better um, you know, vendors. They'll be better for you. If you treat people better, they'll give you better. Just saying. So uh, my recommendation that I'm sharing with you all this week, and I don't always give a recommendation. I'm Oftentimes, I'm just sharing with you a resource. As I say in my normal business, there's a difference between a referral and a recommendation. I have to think about that. Like, am I using the words correctly? See, this is the importance of communication. Um, Yes, I said it correctly. There's a difference between a referral and a recommendation. Now, when I say referral, most of you think of it as what you ask someone to give to a future employer, or in my case, I've written many recommendations for individuals who are applying for scholarships or jobs or whatever else. So I will refer you to someone as a resource, and I clarify to say, here's a list of, you're looking for someone to mow your lawn? Here's a list of three people that I know or three companies that you might reach out to who are able to provi- provide that service. That's one thing. When I'm giving a recommendation, I tell you, I will say, oh, you're looking for someone to mow your lawn? I highly recommend so-and-so service because they'll be on time. They'll be efficient. They won't rake the coals with you with the price. They're going to give you exactly, I'm go, that's a recommendation. And I make the distinction. So in this case, I'm giving you a recommendation for this book. All that to tell you that, yeah, that's how I am. <laughs> Gotta love the details. Okay. So once again, time is flying with all the joy and pleasure that we're having today. All right. So I wanted to share with you all our time tool technique for the week. All right. So this isn't exactly neoteric. Are you wondering how many times I'm going to use the word for the week today? I don't know, but I'm going to keep using it. Um, This time tool technique is something that I kind of live by, but it's not mine. Um. Trying, it's a standard something. I'm not even sure where I got it from. I've heard it on many occasions. It's like one of those things like saying Xerox to make a photocopy. It's just been around for a while. And so for a time tool technique, this helps you give value to the things you're thinking about doing to determine one, should you do them? And then two, like what is their rank? All right. So one of my things in particular, I recognize for me as a workaholic that one of the ways that I get off kilter is when I allow other people to determine my priorities. So that's part of the reason why I check my email when I want to check my email. It's part of the reason why I don't answer every phone call. Because for most of you all, like you are led by other people's actions. Yes. Like, you know, your phone rings, you're like, oh, I got to get it. Why? Is that person paying your phone bill? Do you have to answer that? Um, Or it's like email, like a lot of us. So we try to get you all to the point where you are exercising and utilizing quantifiable goals. Like you're saying, here's what I want to accomplish. Here are the steps to get there. Here are the things that I have to do to accomplish that step, to get to the next step. And you're checking things off of that lovely list. 
So for me, like I start off each day, I'm going, okay, what are the things I'm going to accomplish today? And I have a list. I hate, I, I hate to say, um, I have a list of about 200 and I think it's like seven things that I need to check off. And as an entrepreneur, unfortunately, it's normal because you're doing one project and it makes you think, oh, I could expand my business and I can do this project. Or I have this personal item I want to take care of. Like right now, I um, I need to edit an old book. I'm working on writing a new book. I'm learning a new software so that I can finish creating my new shopping cart. Christina with a C over here in the Imagine Media Lab wants me to go set up another account so that I can do some affiliate stuff. And then like the list is long. And so how do you determine what's the thing that gets your top priority? But for a lot of you, that's hard to do because you say, here are my five things for today, which is what I try to have. I know my list is 200 and, you know, seven. It is. The list is crazy. But I try to say, what are the things I'm going to do today? Here are my top five. Oh no, those trades, quattro, single. My top five for the day. And I'm very excited if I get through it half of that list. I feel really great if I get through all five. And then when I get through five, I have more lists I can go to and add to. Right. So this way it's like, how do you eat an elephant? Which is nasty. One bite at a time. So that's my five. And that helps me to get items off of my list of 207. Although I'm adding to that list daily, but I can still feel better because I have a sense of accomplishment. So how do you prioritize when you're not letting other people determine um, your, your priority. I keep thinking about, I have a friend, um, who follows the show. Hello, Kimberly. And she has this sign on her desk that I will not quote properly, but it's basically your, your procrastination, whatever the bottom line is, because it's your emergency doesn't make it my emergency. Right. I'm going to find that quote and I will supply it. Or Kimberly, if you're out there, you can share it because I don't know, don't know off the top of my head, but that's the thing. So once you stop letting others determine what's important for you, you can then apply this time tool technique, right? So as you can see, it's got quadrants, which just means it's a quadrants are quads. They're four sided. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I was about to geek out. I'm back. I'm good. All right. And so there's quadrant one, two, three, four, right? Yeah. Quadrant one, if we're talking about ranking priority, that's it. Quadrant four is the opposite end of that, right? If it's urgent and important, you do it. This is, I, I promise, this is not one of those rocket science. I, like, I started to share with you all um, some of my actual formulas for time management and ranking items, but they, they, sounded, com they sounded complicated. And I was like, the explanation is complicated. We will not do P times MIU equal. We are not going to do it. We're not going to do it. I thought about it, but we're not going to do it. We're going to stick to something that's simple enough that everyone can follow. Is it urgent? That's a time sensitivity matter. Is it really urgent? On the list of things you have to do, does this have to happen right now? Right now. Right. Okay. If it, if it, it is, if it's an urgent matter and it's important. So like I have people who are sometimes always, in crisis. Okay. Do you all, do you all, do you know any people like that, Christina? Do you have people who are always like, everything is like always like in a frenzy? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty is the best policy. And that's where we all start to do better. Okay. Um, yeah. So I have learned over the years, especially as a consultant, even when I was a mentor and even when I work with kids, especially when I work with youth, which um, I have started back up again. I had a dance class nice last night and I have um, two oh. young dancers that have just started with me uh -huh. and it's like starting from scratch. And I had to turn to my assistant. I was like, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't do young people tonight. I, I just, they're, everything is important. Like everything is critical. Everything is a crisis. And I'm like, that's too much emotion for me in five minutes. I'm, I'm just saying it's the same reason that I can't watch shows like, Oh my God, what's the hospital show? Um, the one with the doctors, it's always a crisis every single week. Anyway, is it house? 
it's what the, the I love house. No, not house. It's house. it's the one that's been on longer. Um with the, all the doctors have nicknames like Dr. McHotty or Dr. McHotty. Grey's Anatomy? Yes. Okay. Grey's Anatomy. It's named for her last name, but really it's all gray matter. Nothing is ever settled. Nothing is ever resolved. Right. It is just a nighttime soap opera. And it's always like, drum over here, drum over here, drum over here. Resolve this drama, add in drama. Let's make this drama. It's not really drama, but hey, it's, everything is so like, it, I can't. I just, not, it's true. not my MO. So when we talk about dealing with people and issues, I am ve- I am often into the, I see that it's urgent for you. Like I see for you, the world is, the sky is falling. Um, although it never fell in that story, by the way, people, the sky never fell. Um, that there had this mentality that the sky is falling. Is it really, is this really important? Like just because for you, it's important. Is it important for anyone other than you? Uh, okay. Um, So, but if it turns out that it really is urgent, like a lot of times, like I said, I have my five items that I'm planning on accomplishing, but for example, um, yesterday, yesterday, um, I had a call that I was supposed to be on at 1030 and I thought they were calling me. So I kept working, waiting for the call and I really wasn't thinking about it, but turns out the phones were off and I didn't know because our phone and our internet are all through Verizon. And so the internet was fine and I was steadfastly working. So the person was supposed to call me called Ty's cell phone number. Ty in turn told me, and that's when we found out that the phone lines were down. So I have the phone call that I have to make and now I'm late for, and now I'm singing, I'm seeming less than professional because our phones aren't on. Um, And I also need to figure out what's going on with the phone. So when you're trying to figure out like, what do you respond to? You could go either way with that. So in my, in my vein, I'm going, both of these are urgent. The phone lines are down, which means business is interrupted, um, which could mean any communication. Oh, we have cell phones, but it's, it's pretty critical. And I'm supposed to be on this call because this is business that has to be attended to. It's an actual appointment. And that's reputation and everything else, and it's all involved. So I had to make a decision, like, which quadrant did this fall into? So I placed my meeting, because I, I take my meeting seriously, I put it into quadrant one, immediately called the person on my cell phone, asked him to hold one second, and then reached out into quad, quadrant three, actually, to try to delegate it, right? Um, although it was important, but it wasn't as important as the call. And so I reached out to Martha, our wonderful receptionist and said, please find out what's going on. Please get Ty involved. Find out what's going on over here. So when we're talking about, it's a, it's a really useful tool to utilize if you're trying to figure out what to address, what to ignore, what to deal with. So the quadrants, quadrant one, is it urgent and important? Do that. Quadrant two, it's urgent. All right. It really is something that's happening and it's happening right now. But in your real scheme of things, it's not important. If you know your mission and understand your purpose for what you do, this is how you know whether or not it's important. And so if it's not important, make a plan for it for the future. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we get into, so kind of actually the phone thing, I, I kind of made my plan was hmm, let Martha and Ty deal with this until I'm available. So it turned out there was a there was an outage for 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 Verizon um, because of all the crazy weather. So found all that out. Quadrant three, it's urgent but not in. Sorry, quadrant two, it's not urgent but important. Sorry, I knew I had that wrong. It's not urgent but it's important. So still make a plan for it. See, ooh, mm, okay. Then there's quadrant three, where it's urgent but not important. Delegate it. Um, quadrant four, it's not urgent and it's not important. Get rid of it. So a lot of times we take on other people's like issues, yeah. other people's stuff, other people's concerns, other people's pressure. And then we're all stressed out, mm-hmm. worrying about and not taking care of our own stuff, dealing with someone else's stuff. Right. Right. So I will, I love, I love a good example. I don't know if I've ever told you the story of one of my friends and a bully when I was in high school. Have I ever told you that story before? Mm -mm. Let me tell it now. 
So one of my closest friends, I feel like saying her name, but I won't. Yes, I will. Sonia. I'm going to say it because I'm still hot about it. 20 years later. How long have I been out of high school? However long it's been, I'm still mad about this. So the issue felt urgent. (laughs) It felt important. One of the young ladies at our school was bullying her. She was always like talking. We were freshmen and this young lady was a junior. And she kept talking crazy to her. And so... Um, I am very protective of my people. And so I gently approached her and requested ever so kindly, a little forcefully, for her to leave her alone. Like to get her stuff together and leave her be. Mm -hmm. All right. So I feel good because now she has stopped bullying her. She has stopped bothering her. All is well. I got, so then two things happened. One, I got a reprimand from someone who I highly respected. I'm just a freshman, mind you. I only barely been into the school. Richmond Community High School. Thank you all very much. Um, I've only barely been there. There's one young lady who I so respect, and she came to me, and she told me that I was a bully and that I should be nicer to the young lady. And I was like, oh, my God, are you serious? So that's one. So then I feel like my name was sullied. Um, and so then that would have been bad enough. I mean, I could have adjusted that. But then Sonia, are you out there listening? I know she's not because I know where she is. Um, had the audacity to side with her previous bully and befriend her. Like, oh, I'm so sorry that she made you feel that. Okay. So that was when I learned the lesson of just because it's someone else's issue, someone else's urgency, you do not have to take it on. And so, yeah, so there was a lot of emotional baggage. Here I am. How how long after that? Still got that baggage. And some of you are suffering <laughs> because of this story. I'm like, nope, I'm not getting involved in that because you're probably going to change your mind anyway. So when you are figuring out how to utilize this time tool technique, keep in mind Everyone's crusade isn't your crusade. But if it is your crusade, figure out where does it go. If it's urgent and important, quadrant one, I'm going to just do it. You knew I had to get that in there somewhere. If it's not urgent but important, make a plan for it. If it is urgent but not important, delegate it. If it is neither urgent or important, duh, 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 down the drain it goes. And this sounds pretty straightforward, but I promise you people, if you really implement this, this can make a change in your life. So first, stop letting other people allocate your time for you. And then utilize these quadrants to figure out what you're going to address and what you're not going to address. And then let me know how successful you've been in it. Uh Do you think you can apply it, Christina? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this falls into my whole like self-care journey that I've been on lately mm. um, because self-care does involve creating boundaries and knowing what's urgent, what's not urgent so that you're not um, stressing yourself out. I might talk about that today. See, if you all don't know, Christina has, Socialita Christina has a lifestyle page mm. and some things she's doing in her <clears throat> influencer capacity. She has over 4,000 followers. I can't say anything. I'm just, you know, I can just make, you know, jokes. But really, I don't have 4,000. What are you all doing? I don't have 4,000 followers. What's going on out there, people? Oh, I should work for it? Okay, we'll get back to that. We will put that in the (laughs) important but not urgent category. And I'll get back to you all on building up my following. Oh my gosh. Ooh. I need you all to know that here in the studio, Christina with a C, and we're very happy to be here in the Imagine Media Lab, where the proprietor and our producer is none other than Christina with a C. But I need you all to know she is throwing much shade in my direction <laughs> about things that I that she thinks I should up on my list of things that I'm doing. And I'm getting to them, Christina. They're on the list. And they're not even in the bottom 100. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> they're, they're on the list. Christina's list, Christina with a C, you all don't know. I do the stuff on her list quicker than I do most people's stuff. So take that shade back and go help somebody else. Okay, so then. I feel special. Mm, 
on that note, that Christina person, um, it, we have a few more minutes, and so I want to address our work hard, play harder moment. The theme is all it's all it's all in alignment. So, as we're talking about that time management, living a life of balance, understanding um, what it means to be a leader, especially a servant leader. Mm-hmm. Um, and understanding your purpose in life and what you're looking to accomplish because that really it should be what drives your actions. Um, if you tell me your purpose and plan in life is to make money, I'm actually not going to say anything bad about that. I I don't see money as a bad goal, um, but I will tell you it's a short-sighted goal. And so I would say, dig deeper and see what you're really trying to accomplish. So when we talk about work hard, play harder, I work hard so that I can play harder. Right. 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 And so your play might be different than my play. So right now um, I am trying to figure out is the weather this weekend going to be good enough to go to the beach or are we going to get into that? The weather's been like iffy. For those of you who don't know, we're in Virginia, VA, RVA to be specific. And so we're just a, a stone's throw from DC, from the mountains, from the beach, which is why I love this area. You like the stone's throw? And so long. All right. It's a it's it, that's how that's how we operate here, people. And so we have lots of options. But the weather has been floods. Rain, Mm -hmm. more rain, sweltering heat, Mm -hmm. rain, more rain. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to determine if this is a good day to like go to the beach, but we're coming up on fall. So we've actually had a couple of crisp days. And so like, I want to make sure I maximize my summer before it's all the way gone. And I feel like it's sliding away, but it's hard to tell because there's rain more rain, right. sweltering heat, rain, more rain. I need a sweater. Mm-hmm. But that's uh, that's Virginia. Really, that's Virginia. You can have like three different uh, like weather systems in one day, especially in Richmond. Three different ones. Yeah. Which is why in my car, there is an umbrella. There are um, umbrella, rain shoes, shoes in case it like starts to snow or there's ice a blanket, uh, my beach chair. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, like, sweater, coat, it's all covered. If I can just get to my car, I'm covered. <laughs> so but when we talk about that whole work hard, play harder, looking at that diversity of not just the weather, but your life, how things are changing, the things that are going on, I really want you all to to focus on what you're looking to accomplish and how you want to accomplish it. We talked about that quadrant for the time tool technique. Just giving you another example. This one is by Laura Stacks. And it just basically says, if you're going to figure out how to manage your time so that you can enjoy the play harder as you business better, determine what to do, schedule time to do it. And I schedule everything. I tell people, my clients, schedule date night. Schedule when you're going to work on writing the book. Schedule when you're going to learn to play guitar, which is something I'm working on. In my spare time, that doesn't exist. Focus your attention, process the new information, close the loop as you as you follow that cycle. That's how you're going to manage the time so that you can be a true workaholic. Okay, Christina, one minute. Anything you want to share? Anything coming up? Anything going on? What's going on? Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Socialita Christina. Socialita Christina. Like, ah, like, share, subscribe, repeat. Like, share, subscribe, repeat. I haven't brought out any of these goodies in a while. Okay. All right, people. It's 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we are about to say goodbye. As always, have a great time with you all. We implore you each and every one to live better, do better, be better, and happy entrepreneuring. Ta-ta! Let Social Lisa help your business stand out from the crowd by building your brand's success through social media management. We're located at 1510 Willowlawn Drive, Suite 100. Our website is www.socialitarva.com. You can also give us a call at 804 804- 
484-2001. Again, Socialita. Imagine Media Lab in partnership with the Women's Business Center offers hourly rental to a multimedia studio, create or edit digital assets for marketing, record that podcast you've always wanted to start, voiceovers and live stream. All equipment and software is included in your hourly rental. Located at the Women's Business Center, 1510 Willow Lawn Drive, Suite 100, ImagineMediaLabs.com. Book your session today. 